Hey everybody, Mr. Lake here with another math bootcamp video. We've talked about significant figures. We've talked about rounding. Now we need to talk about something a little bit different, but related. We need to talk about scientific notation because <clears throat> in science, we need a special way for writing numbers. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mr. Lake, why do we need, we know how to write numbers. Why do we need another way to write numbers? Well, there's two reasons. One is that sometimes we have to write really, really large or really, really small values. And standard notation um, sometimes makes that actually harder than it needs to be. And so scientific notation fixes that problem. Also, sometimes there are some situations where we need to show significant figures for large numbers. And the only way to do that is through scientific notation. Here's the example that I'm thinking of. So let's say, for example, that you, I'm gonna choose blue. Let's say that you wanna write the number 150,000, but you wanna write it with three significant figures. Well, how are you gonna do that in this standard notation? Because this is in a sig fig, this is a sig fig. We want this to be a sig fig, but how do we indicate that? Because it's just in a string of trailing zeros. We can't put a decimal here because that would make all of these zeros significant. So what are we gonna do? Well, if we rewrote this as 1.50 times 10 to the fifth, we fix that problem. And this is scientific notation, and this has three significant figures. So sometimes we need to write really big numbers or really small numbers, and sometimes we need to show significant figures in difficult situations, and scientific notation allows us to do all of that. So let's get started. This number here in the middle of the screen, this is a number written in scientific notation. Scientific notation can be used to express any number However, there are some numbers that it makes more sense to use standard notation than scientific notation. And when I say standard notation, I just mean a, a regular number written down. That's all I mean. Now there's two parts to any number written in scientific notation. There is this part, which is called the coefficient or coefficient, weird emphasis there. And then there is the exponent. The times 10 is always in the middle. So scientific notation will always have a times 10 in the middle. The two parts that vary are the coefficient and the exponent. Now, let's say you want to convert a regular number in standard notation into scientific notation. What you're going to do is you're going to move the decimal. You're going to move it so that it is between the first two significant figures. Or some people like to just think it's after the first digit in the number. So for example, if I wanted to write the number 123 in significant or scientific notation, I would move the decimal over so that it's between the one and the two. In doing this, you drop all placeholder zeros. So if you're, for example, writing the number 67,400, you're going to move the decimal so that it's right here, and you're going to rewrite the number, and you're going to drop placeholder zeros, meaning you're going to drop these insignificant zeros at the end here, and the number becomes just 6.74. Now, while you do this, it's important to count how many places you moved the decimal. So in this case, we moved it four places because you're going to use that information. As you move the decimal, count how many places you've moved the decimal and keep track of that. Then the next step is to use, to, to take that number, which is the number of decimal places that you counted that you moved the decimal place, and you're going to make that the exponent. And that's, that's, that's it. Now, there's another piece, which is that, so for example, let me do an example. Let me do an example. And I'm going to disappear so you can see all of this. 67,400 was our example. We're going to move the decimal so that it's right here. And to do that, we moved it one, two, three, four places. It becomes 6.74 because we dropped those placeholder zeros. Then we're going to throw in a times 10. 
and we're going to put a four as the exponent. Now, it is also possible to put a negative exponent. We would do that if this was, for example, 0 0.00, 0 0, 0674, sorry. To write this number in scientific notation, again, we would want to put the decimal between the first two significant figures, which is right here. So we're going to move it one, two, three, four places over. The number becomes 6.74 times 10. And again, we moved it four places, so we're going to write a four as the exponent. Uh-oh. These are not the same number, so they cannot be written the same in scientific notation. What's different about them is that this would be a negative exponent up here, a negative four. So when you're writing the exponent, you're going to use a negative number as the exponent for a decimal that you're writing in scientific notation. Now, there's lots of ways to think about this. The way that I was taught back in the day was like, if you're taking a, a large number that's greater than one and you're converting it into scientific notation, you're going to move the decimal to the left and the exponent's going to be positive. And if you're converting it out of scientific notation, you're going to move the decimal right. And the, it, it, that gets really confusing. So the way that I like to think about it is just positive exponents are for large numbers and negative exponents are for small numbers. So if you have a large number like 67,400, and by large, I mean greater than one. If you have a large number that you want to write in scientific no notation, just do the thing, move the decimal, rewrite the coefficient, and you're going to use a positive exponent because it's it was a big number. If you have a very small number, and by that I mean less than one, a decimal, you're going to do the thing, move the decimal, count how many places, rewrite the coefficient, and just use a negative exponent. Negative exponents are for small numbers. Positive exponents are for big numbers. So let's do a couple of uh, examples here. 1,392,000. Well, we're going to put the decimal right here because that's between the first two significant figures. And the coefficient will become 1.392. And then we're going to put in a times 10 because all scientific notation includes that times 10. How many places did we move it? One, two, three. Boop, pop, six. And it's a big number. It's a big number. So it's a positive exponent. Now let's do this one. 0. 000 0.00000028. We want to put the decimal right here between the first two significant figures. Now this might be a little bit difficult because you might think, well, there's a whole bunch of digits before that, but these are all leading zeros, which are not sig figs. These are the first two significant figures. So the decimal goes between those two. So the coefficient becomes 2.8. Then we put in the times 10. How many decimals did we move it? Beep, boop, bop, beep, boop, beep, boop, bop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We moved it eight places. And it's a really small number. It's a decimal. So we're going to make that a negative eight. And there you have it. You know how to convert into scientific notation. Congrats. I hope that made sense. Now, you also might have to convert out of scientific notation. Well, now that you know how to convert into scientific notation, you can probably reverse the process, but let's go through kind of some step-by-step -step examples of how to do that. Remember, positive exponents are for large numbers, negative exponents are for small numbers. This is why I like thinking of the rule in this way. It's maybe not like textbook conventional, but it works for converting into and out of scientific notation. So if you're putting something into scientific notation and it's a big number, put a positive exponent. If you see a positive exponent on a number in a scientific notation, you're going to make it a big number. Let me show you what I mean by that. All right. Here are a couple of examples. I'm going to switch my color to proper green. 2.4 times 10 to the 10th. This tells us that we're going to move the decimal 10 places. But the question is, do we move the decimal to the left or the right? Well, it's a positive exponent. So therefore, positive exponents are for big numbers, meaning we want to move the decimal in a way that's going to make this a big number. 
So if we move it to the left, that's going to move the decimal over here and add a bunch of uh, leading zeros and make it a tiny decimal. That's not what we want. We want to make it a big number. So we're going to move the decimal to the right. And we're going to move it 10 spaces to the right. The first space that we move it is going to move the decimal to here after the four. And then we want to move it nine more spaces. So we need to add nine placeholder zeros. And just to double check, we moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the decimal is there. We're not going to write the decimal because that would make all of these trailing zeros significant, which we don't want. These are just placeholder zeros, but that's where the decimal is implied. All right. So that is this. This is this number in sci in standard notation. We've converted the scientific notation number into standard. That was hard to say for some reason. Okay, now let's do another one. 7.83 times 10 to the negative 12th power. So again, we're going to move the decimal 12 places, but which way? Do we want to move it to the left and make it a really small number, a decimal? Or do we want to make move it to the right and make it a really big number? Well, there's a negative here. Negative exponents are for small numbers, so we want to make this a small number, which means we're not going to move the decimal this direction. So we've got to move, and you'll get used to this after doing it a little ways, but I immediately think, okay, the first place I move the decimal is going to be in front of the seven. So that takes care of the first move. Then I've got 11 more moves left. So I'm going to have to add 11 placeholder zeros after the, after the decimal, right? So this is just an extra, extra placeholder zero. In fact, maybe that's confusing. Maybe I should not even write that. We've got our decimal place, and then we're going to move, make 11 placeholder zeros. And then 7, 8, 3. All right, that's our number. We can write an extra placeholder zero here if we want to. So just to double check, did we move the decimal 12 places from right here? Beep, boop, bop, beep, boop, beep, bop, boop, beep. Beep, bop, boop. That was 12. I should have counted that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We did it. And so now you officially truly know everything you need to know about scientific notation. Converting into and converting out of. The thing that is most confusing for people is when you're learning, you might get that direction of movement wrong. You might you know, think like, okay, wait, when do I use a positive exponent? When do I use a negative exponent? If I see a negative exponent, which way do I move the decimal? So I always like to think positive exponents are for big numbers. Negative exponents are for small numbers. There's other ways to think about it. Here's another one. When the exponent is positive, you're going to move the decimal to the right. Maybe that helps you out. In other words, you're going to make it bigger. When it's negative, you'll move it to the left. Whatever helps you to remember proper movement of that decimal is what you should remember. There's no correct way to think about it. The correct way to think about it is the way that helps you remember. Now, one quick note, this isn't really related to converting to or from scientific notation, but when you use numbers in scientific notation to do math, you're going to want to use a calculator and you're going to want to use parentheses. So what I mean is like, let's say you want to Let's do orange. Let's say you want to write, or sorry, you want to calculate 6.7 times 10 to the fourth, and you want to multiply that times 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth. What you don't want to do is you don't want to just type this into your calculator just like this. If you type 6.7 times 10 to the fourth times 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth, your calculator is going to multiply these two things together. First, it's going to follow the order of operations. And then it's going to take that answer and it's going to multiply it by this. And then it's going to take that answer and multiply it by this. And you're not going to get what you want. Especially when it comes to like doing division, things get really tricky. Because if this was divided by, if we want to divide these two numbers, 
what it's going to do is it's going to multiply this by this and then divide by this and then multiply all of it by this. But really what we want is to divide all of this by all of this, right? Because this represents one value and this represents another value. So the key to, to all of it, and it's a simple key, but it's something that um, it takes a while for people to get used to. The simple solution is you use parentheses around every number in scientific notation. So I encourage students to even write parentheses when they write scientific notation uh, numbers on paper, just so it's even more natural to put parentheses around them when you use a calculator. If we do that, if we, I'm going to clear this. If we do that, that clarifies what's going on. We're taking this whole value and multiplying by this whole value, or especially if we do this 6.7 times times 10 to the fourth divided by 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now the calculator knows to take this whole value here and divide it by this whole value here, not take this and then just divide it by 1.46 and then multiply it all by 10 to the negative eighth. So use parentheses when you're using a calculator. Also, um, in case you're not used to using exponents on your calculator, you're going to use one of these four buttons. Um, if you use a TI-30XS multi-view by Texas Instruments, the greatest calculator a kid can get, like I do, uh, there's two buttons. Um, one says like X to the second, and that just throws in a second um, exponent, or there's a little caret button, right? Now, you can just type in times 10 and then use your caret button to add a number. You can tell I'm a math teacher. You can tell I'm not a math teacher because I don't <laughs> know. I'm not used to referring to uh, keys on a calculator. But you can use the caret button to just add those exponents, or sometimes you can use one of these keys as a shortcut. But if that confuses you, just type times 10 and then use the little caret key. And by, by that, I mean, you know, the key that, looks like that. It looks like a little upwards arrow. Just use that to add the exponent after the times 10. And then make sure that you've put parentheses around the whole thing. Now you have, we've completed our talk about scientific notation. Congratulations. You've finished watching this video and you are now ready to work on sections four and five of that worksheet that we've been working on slowly as we've covered each of these sections. So go conquer that. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.